Good day, everyone. I am Troy Alde from the MSC, and I'm your president. And with me now is... Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Isa Dichinko, your MSC auditor. Okay. Guys, for today's episode of Ingendo, we have a really special guest. Right, Isa? Yep, that's right. Today, we have a practicing physician in the field of psychiatry, and she's currently working in the World Health Organization Philippine office. And at the same time, guys, for the month of October, we have our guest, a mental health advocate. Okay, without further ado, let me welcome our guest, Dr. Jasmine Vergara from the World Health Organization. Good afternoon, Troy and Isa. And thank you for um, inviting us no, on behalf of WHO Philippines uh, to your um, Ishendo, right? And good afternoon to everyone. Just a backstory, Dr. Vergara is actually a graduate from FUNRM. Why did you choose medicine as your profession? Why be a physician? Why, why physician? During that time, siguro high school, um, you know, I was in high school and our parents, you know, I was just following the orders of my parents, grandparents, and family members, uncles and aunties. Um, uh, I was good in, I guess, in math and science. So um, back then, it's either you go to law or uh, medicine. So I chose uh, the path in uh, of medicine. So um, uh, I think most of our friends, you know, are either a doctor or a lawyer. So that's one. Um, I was influenced, um, of course, by my family members, and uh, you know, having to be in this uh, noble uh, profession to help and serve others. So having said that, ma'am, what do you think makes a good doctor? I'd start with someone who stands firm with the values um, in, that embodies a doctor, you know, being compassionate, you know, compassionate not just for the patients, not for your patients, but for all human beings. Maybe this is a family member, a person that you encounter in the hospital, you know, the people around us, the people that we work with. At the same time, um, we strive for excellence. No? Hindi to mediocre, hindi to, uh, you know, uh, there will be a next time to do that. You know, uh, when we treat uh, and want to save lives, this is we value excellence, professionalism, how we interact with different, uh, you know, uh, stakeholders and your um, people that uh, you encounter every day. This is how, um, uh, I believe a doctor would, uh, you know, um, strive to be a person with integrity. You know, someone who holds true to the values of, uh, you know, uh, being honest and um, upholding the rights of the persons or the people that we are serving. The right to health, you know, with equality and equity, uh, giving uh, a fair um, opportunities for everyone to be able to take part in their own, you know, uh, healing or journey or treatment. Kumbaga. So it, 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 it encompasses all of those elements. And, um, you know, uh, those are just some of the key values that I believe a doctor should uh, have. Knowing that you come from an organization that is centered around providing empowerment and giving out hope, the World Health Organization is... Um, an organization that helps people stand back from, from, from being down in general. So having said that, uh, we've already seen your work in WHO, pero can you say that the journey you took with, it, with WHO is worth it? Definitely. So Definitely, Troy. Thank you. Thank you for um, you know asking that. It's definitely worth it. Uh, the vision, or you know, the mission for WHO is you know to promote health, you know, uh, keep the world safe, and serve the vulnerable. And that 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 also in, uh, covers all the different um, elements that we are striving to have. Um, like I said, hindi madaling uh, madali. I, I've been like 20 years in uh, as a physician, uh, but um, kind of like uh, created a, 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 a path of my own somehow. No, iba iba tayo ng path na napuntahan. 
at the same time, uh, we still live with the, the values that we, uh, you know, take on from the start. Troy and I are actually aware from the video we were, that we were able to um, get to know you better. You yourself went through uh, a certain time of your life where it was pretty low. So I think it's just really nice to know that we're hearing from someone who's not only standing by um, fighting for mental health awareness, but someone who actually went through it. Before, uh, we hardly talk about uh, you know, you know, mental health or psychiatry. Uh, I think the medicine, medical field also views psychiatry as something of a last resort, I, in, my, in my personal opinion. Back then, when they said, oh, you talk to a psychiatrist only when you are already in trouble or, you know, really, um, you know, um, in distress. But when we talk about mental health, in, 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 the, in definition, WHO's definition, right? It's mental health is a state of well-being, sabi mo nga, which an individual realizes his or her own potential, can, you know, can cope with the normal stresses in life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to con- you know, contribute to his or her own community, maybe in school or in family or at home or you know, at work. Um, back then, uh, it was, it was uh, I guess, uh, difficult still to talk about it. But now that um, we're moving away from the focus of the clinical perspective, right? So a more, you know, continuum, the, the full spectrum, the, the, the whole continuum from well-being, you know, mild distress, you know, um, you know um, some clinically defined conditions and uh, recovery model approach. So when we look at mental health this way, to, from mental health to well-being to uh, mental disorders, we'll be able to see different also interventions at different levels of care. No? So mental health promotion, mental health uh, prevention or you know um, uh, uh, treatment or care at the primary care settings doesn't have to be the specialist agad na nag address ng mental health conditions or issues right and then when there's a need to refer to a more um, specialized services then that's the time so this way we're able to create better access to people who would need mental health support so uh, and I'm glad that this is something that you know students like you guys are able to talk about it openly, because um, you yourself can ab- would be able to support mental health in your own capacity without even to be a specialist. So now uh, when we talk about when we say mental health, it's everyone's business, not just by the health sector, even beyond the health sector, the schools, you know, the workplaces, the community, the barangay. So. Um, we have, you know, come so uh, so far from progress in, in progress, and uh, we still have a lot, you know, to uh, do in um, promoting or increasing access to uh, quality mental health care for all. Apart from all the fields, given that it was different before, uh, not so long ago, <laughs> not so long ago, why psychiatry? Uh, I had some different inklings on the opportunity that our school was able to provide uh, a good perspective of this this field. Example, there was uh, an opportunity like I think I, I think I was in third year where our professor invited a guest inside our uh, um, our psychiatry class for us to um, interview a guest on um, psychiatric interviewing. And I volunteered for that, you know, without me knowing that I would be the one to be doing this for the rest of my life, or at least in the in the elements of program work, uh, you know, service delivery, development. So also, um, it paved the way uh, for me to enter psychiatry because also in during our rotation we had like a one month rotation in National Center for Mental Health. We were, is this, is this something that you also are still having, right? So um, it provided that avenue to um, open up the doors for me to, um, you know, get into psychiatry. As, as mentioned, it has mental health as a place in my heart. Maybe at the time, I wouldn't be labeling it as, uh, you know, uh, as such that I was coping, I was, you know, evolving. But 
it gave meaning, you know, it gave purpose, um, you know, the resilience that I uh, I was able to experience. Uh, it, it talks about mental health. And these are elements that I am able to also experience with family members. So um, those experiences actually, um, you know, triggered my interest. Uh, I was a neurologist. Actually, I entered neurology psychi- uh, residency for about a few months, of course, and then I felt maybe I want to learn more beyond the, the brain, uh, you know, how people are unique uh, with their capabilities and their skills and their ability to cope. So there are different, uh, you know, aspects. So there was a calling already by then. Uh, back then rather so um, and I guess uh, I'm calling also everyone more of how we would need more professionals or experts even if you're not a psychiatrist and you're um, you know general physician or in other fields somehow mental health should be integrated in the practice you know um, this is something that is going to be shared by everyone so this is a calling already for everyone also Now that we're in a pandemic, uh, Dr. Vergara, isn't it quite timely to address mental health issues um, given that um, as medical students, we are in a setup that's practically new, was previously non-existent, or um, it was previously uh, underdeveloped. So lately lang tayo nagkaroon ng um, parang leeway into the online platform. Uh, how can you suggest the students, the medical students, on how they can cope with their classes, all of the backlogs, the work, and in medicine yes. in general? Thank you, Troy. Um, I couldn't imagine myself in in this in the situation as a medical student. It must be it must be really really hard. You know, I remember uh, when I was still a medical student. You know, we have to develop skills clinical eye na tinatawag natin ano you have to auscultate uh, physically examine everyone full history taking um, but with the barriers that we have um, a lot of adjustment is uh, being required for the medical students like you all and it's really going to be hard you know i uh, you know, face to face interaction that human touch you know that bedside manner that our that clinical eye how how could we pick it up how can we hone those skills right those those clinical skills so i'd say that of course each and every one of us uh, have a different way of coping first is of course finding balance you know um i remember some of the exams right it's all right you know um having that a uh, structure routines you may have developed, right? Um, waking up in the morning, starting your, um, you know, routines, uh, uh, studying, you know, in advance and then exams. And then at the same time, getting enough rest, important um, It's really stressful, but we have to get some rest. Um, try a helpful ways or healthy ways of coping. Kasi may ibang coping mechanisms that are unhealthy. So we have to advise everyone. We recommend that more lean towards the healthy ways of, you know, nourishment, healthy food, um, um, enjoying the things that you enjoy, you know, outside of school as well. You know, maybe an art class or a, a painting or a hobby that that you are enjoying or listening to the music or watching a favorite, um, you know, whatever, K-drama or Netflix, I guess. So um, having that structure, at the same time, it's important, you know how we take care of ourselves, right? This self-care aspect. And then connecting with everyone, you know, trusted individuals, you know. Um, you know, the trust mo, maybe a friend, a colleague, a member of the family, you know, your teacher, your mentor, we reach out to them, maybe in, in the form of, um, you know, Um, emails or um, um, phone, mobile connection or um, social media platform in a safe manner. No, uh, itong uh, pandemic is um, hindering us from that uh, human connection. But there are also ways that we can still connect with each other. You know, stay socially connected while 
we're physically uh, you know distant with each other so there are other ways that we can still maintain that connection because this is these are the elements that can you know motivate us motivate you the students to you know uh, realize your dreams and you know uh, visions and your you know aspirations in life and we will be there to support you so when we when we would want to um, um, take care of our own ways of coping our resilience we also have to consider and forgive ourselves that we cannot be always in control of everything we have to acknowledge that and we have to forgive ourselves kung if we're not able to do a lot of things at the right moment because you yourself has to you know, save or you know care for yourself and well-being so before we are able to care for others alagaan natin sarili natin right that's like you know we we practice what we teach to the world right so um ganun din diba parang kung tayo ay um, gusto nating maging uh, 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 makapag-provide ng excellent service to our uh, the people that we're serving dapat uh, equip tayo na uh, alam natin yung boundaries natin our limitations and capabilities and we learn from that no i always carry this uh, you know phrases although it's not my word but I, I I I follow these principles of dreaming big. You dream big, you know. It's all right to dream big. A lot of uh, vision, you know, how you want to be when you become, you know, the doctor or what kind of doctor you want to be. You dream that, you know. Um, and then we 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 have to be kind, not just to others but to ourselves, you no. Know? You have to, you know, carry those values that will be when we're kind to ourselves, even at height of stress. Now, how we put our values na yon at at that time, and we are, when you're also being kind to other people, you're able to serve with quality care. And then um, you don't forget to uh, give thanks and you know gratitude to the people you meet everywhere. Maybe. Uh, person at the cafeteria a person the family member of the patient that you are taking care of or or um, a co colleague or a doctor you know everyone has an opportunity to learn from each other so we give thanks to that you know at the same time uh, life is a continuous process of learning so we, we don't stop from learning even if we graduate from medicine tuloy-tuloy pa rin itong uh, pag-aaral so um this is something that uh, I could share to the to the students and uh, to everyone. Um, just be patient, you know. That that thing, the uh, opportunity at the right moment, at the right time for for you all. So as we close, or as we end rather, this episode of Inchendo, we would once again like to thank our special guest for today, Dr. Jasmine Brigada. I am the technical officer. National Professional Officer for Mental Health and Substance Use at WHO Country Office here in the Philippines. Thank you so much, ma'am. This has been Inchendo, Narratives That Inspire. I am Isa Bichinko, your MSc Auditor. And I'm Troy Alde, your MSc President. And we thank you and have a good day.